What's up everyone, it's Jordan, the Lazy Ass Reefer. It's been about three months since I made a video. I've just been super busy uh, with my daughter out of school for the summer and doing activities with her. Uh, I just got a 85 pound, one year old German Shepherd puppy. He's like a toddler, he needs uh, <laughs> basically constant attention. Remy, hey boy. He's a good boy, love him. Uh, he just takes up a lot of my free time. Uh, but I recently decided that I wanted to make a uh, water making station um, just to make things easier for myself and my wife. And I just wanted to show you guys how I did it um, because it's simple, but it took, it was, it was very frustrating uh, at, at first, you know, trying to get all the components to work together. So I'm on a well. Um, and, and by the way, this is my utility like room, uh, you know, washer, dryer. There's a guest like shower, but I'm, I'm never going to use that ever. Uh, so I'm on a well, so I had to pick up this Aquatech uh, 8800 booster pump. Uh, it boosted my PSI from 40 uh, all the way up to like over 100, so I had to dial it back so I don't damage the RL membrane. Uh, so right now I'm sitting at about 84 PSI. So, uh, and you can pick these up for like $100. They're, uh, you just, you know, they're, they just make your whole RODI system so much more effective, uh, or I'm sorry, efficient and uh, you make water so much faster. Um, so in conjunction with that, uh, back in there, there's a uh, pressure switch, which is sold separately. Um, that, when the back pressure hits 40 PSI, uh, kills the power to that. And what gives that the back pressure is the float valve in this bucket right here. Um, so as you're making water, the water level rises, the float valve uh, you know, actuates like that. You start to build up pressure in this line and that senses it, which kills power to that. Now what they don't tell you about this is that this shuts off, sure, um, but the water is still allowed to uh, flow through it. And so you're basically what you're having is, since the water isn't able to go into your bucket, all of your water is basically forced uh, down the waistline and it just doesn't shut off. So with my float valve um, came this auto shut off valve and <clears throat> there's, a, there's a many different ways that you can install that. Um, currently, I have it in between my uh, RO membrane and my DI resin. And there's a video from Bulk Reef Supply uh, where I learned that this was the proper place to put that um, despite the instructions that come with it. And so what happens is, uh, I'll just run you through it. Float valve actuates, uh, pressure starts to build up in that line, pressure switch actuates, kills this, and then when the remaining system, uh, pressure builds up in the system, that causes uh, this to actuate. So this shuts off um, the ability for the water to flow from the RO membrane into your DI resin, which is your last stage. So, uh, and they don't tell you that, um, like I said, that without this, I mean with this, but without the auto shutoff valve, water will just continue to go down your drain. And so by using these two products in conjunction, I have a completely autonomous system where, um, I, you know, I say I want to fill up my uh, auto top off reservoir. I can just put like a little, you know, pitcher here or whatever, um, open this ball valve, fill it up, and then the water level in here is going to lower, which will uh, deactuate the float valve. And then the whole system kicks back on. And then, you know, like I said, I already ran you through before, when the flow valve rises up, it, you know, goes through its little process of um, building up pressure, and then it, it shuts off. Uh, so, you know, the water coming from the shower is on, you know, the booster pump still technically has power. So, like, you know, this is autonomous, and if something goes wrong, um, you could definitely flood your house. So if you're going to be going out of town for an extended period of time, uh, I would not leave it in the on position. Um, this is more or less just, you know, when I'm at home and, uh, sorry for the background noise. He's, he's chewing on a bone. Um, yeah. Thanks Remy. <laughs> I appreciate the sound effects. So anyway, um, this is just, you know, it's like that, that mentality of just, you know, work smarter, not harder. Um, this is up elevated just so I can just put a pitcher under there, just let gravity do its thing. And this whole thing is autonomous. Um, but like I said, it is prone to failure. It can fail at any point. You know, the float valve could fail. 
the bucket will overflow, the pressure switch could flow, um, or I'm sorry, could fail, which would just allow pressure to build up and build up and build up in that line, which would cause a rupture. Uh, just any of these components could fail, so just, you know, you have to be cautious. Um, shut off the, the electricity to the pump, to the booster pump, and shut off the water, you know, like I said, if you're going to be out of the area. So, uh, all in all, I think it cost me, like, that's $100, that's 15 the pressure switch is $15 uh and then um the float valve the, by aquatic life that came with the auto shut off uh, valve uh was about $25 at my local fish shop so i mean depending on your prices expect to spend around $140 somewhere around there but um you can't put a price on uh, on making your life and your routine easier because as I said in the past if it's hard or frustrating you're not going to do it long term then you're going to start cutting corners and that's when you're going to run into you know uh, as they call it lazy ass reefer syndrome and uh, you're you know you're going to experience problems in your tank so uh, that's all I got for today um, I'll be having I'll have more videos coming soon and uh, that's it say bye Remy all right catch you later guys